Welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business, the show for international business women to get inspired with best practices and insights on how to scale up your business internationally. Your host is Tineke Rensen from Holland. She is well known for supporting female business owners to expand their business massively and internationally. Tineke is an international business expert for 28 years and is the author of the book, Maximum Business Growth for Women. It is time that women step up and create bigger businesses so that women can make a bigger impact in the world. Enjoy this powerful show as Tineke Rensen and her guest expert combine their brilliance in business to help you take your business to the next level. Everybody, welcome to the talk show, The Power of Women in Business. And I'm really excited because today I have the honor of talking to Mindy Gibbons Klein and she is a serial entrepreneur and she owns an international publishing house. How about that? So let me introduce you to her. Um, Mindy is a native New Yorker. She's made it to the UK and that's her home base at the moment. She's a multi-award winning serial entrepreneur. She's a fierce advocate and role model for entrepreneurs, female leaders and underrepresented groups. She's written eight books and she's enabled hundreds of other people write their books too. Thanks to Mindy, over 1,000 amazing people have told their stories and raised their profiles as thought leaders. Her TEDx talk has nearly half a million views. Wow. These days, Mindy talks about becoming a thoughtful leader and speaker. And like I said, her business is international and she, always, uh, she also owns an international publishing house. Well, wow, Mindy, <laughs> that's you. Yay! How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm, I'm great. Ah, uh, wow. Well, I have a lot of questions for you. So, uh, you, you say you have written eight books. Which is the one you're most proud of? Well, in a way, I'm most proud of the first one. Yeah? Because if you do the first one, you can't have eight. <laughs> Many people don't even get one yeah. published and published. Um, and that started everything off. But I, I guess this is the one where I broke away 20 book carat bold, even though it's gold. <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, that is the one that opened everything up for us and for me and my businesses because um, it, it, we're not just talking about books. That was the first time that I put a stake in the ground to talk about thought leadership. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that a lot of people were really interested. Mm -hmm. Seth Godin. So, uh -huh. you know, he's a big name and um, I was so excited. To yeah. That, that, that one really turned everything around uh, for me nearly 10 years ago. Wow, well, that's a long time ago, and in the meantime, you've written all the other books as well. Did you already have your publishing house when you started writing your first book? No. No, I okay. I got to learn a lot about the publishing industry because I used another company who didn't do everything perfectly, but it gave us a lot of uh, material <laughs> and yeah. a lot of um, research. You know, when we started ours, we thought, okay, we like this, but we don't like that. But you know, that's an excellent way of starting a business. When, when you see something that you would do a lot better, that's usually a very good uh, case to start. Good. <laughs> I like that. So I bet, I bet you've improved a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Publishing, business is seven, uh, no, publishing business is 13 years old. My coaching business is 17 years mm -hmm. uh, now. And yeah, I mean, you have to be willing to kind of be agile and pivot and all this modern stuff. Yeah. But, uh, We've learned a lot and we've made a lot of mistakes. I say we, my co-founder left uh, eight years ago mm -hmm. and I still say we. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but you know, usually you, you I know you, it's not just you in your business. Uh, you're not the only one running your business, so then it's always we. And I believe, you know, even if you're small, it's smart to talk about we anyhow. Because <laughs> you always have other people who support you and help you and yeah. <laughs> um, well, 
what what would be very good all, all these women uh, they do business internationally but that does not necessarily mean they are a global brand so what would be your would be your best tips to the audience to become a global brand ah well Tineke, we have to first ask the question and when I say we I mean everybody who's listening and watching yeah um, ask yourself that question do you want to be a global brand and why and then be willing to think about sacrifices because to become a global brand you do have to travel um, occasionally a lot can be done virtually now look at us yeah but, uh, I think it's a big decision and, and women women are lucky because we don't think bigger than we can cope with usually yeah true. We too small but that's another story when some woman decides I'm going to be a global brand, she's already breaking away from the, the average, right? Mm -hmm. And this is not something, especially yep. if you have kids, if you have a family, uh, that's the sacrifices I'm talking about. I tried to get my work-life balance right, and I was doing a lot of traveling when my kids were young, and I didn't have the balance right. Mm -hmm. So now it's different. They've grown up, they've moved out, and I'm rebuilding and building it stronger and bigger, my global, all my global brands. So my best tip is to just think about all of the aspects before you jump in and commit to doing that. Because maybe you will be a global brand or you should grow your brand globally, but maybe you need another three, four, five years until your kids are more independent or there's other factors for us women, if you have kids. Yeah, well, you know, it's making a decision is, it is one thing, but you will not be a global brand in one year. Well, luckily, maybe, but you know, it takes time to build, so. Um... Well, I mean, I have done other things, but you said, what's my best tip? <laughs> Sure about what you're doing. Yeah, you're doing. definitely. I, to I totally agree. And I like what you say that I've had exactly the same experience. I had my business long time before the kids were even not there. So I had to step back uh, a little and now they're in not, not independent. They still live with me, but <laughs> they, they do their own thing. And uh, yeah, it becomes a lot easier. And then, uh, but yeah, that we, we all have that uh, if we are moms. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you know, it's it, it it's it can be difficult sometimes. But it's you know that's just the way it is. There's no way of making a point of it. It's just yeah. I just think we're so blessed because yeah. you know we do have that maternal instinct. Most mm. mothers. <laughs> yeah. Have. And we we so we have so many different facets and aspects to our life mm -hmm. and our interests and our loves. And so I love my businesses and I love. My family and you know I just feel really blessed that I don't just have one focus yeah I love how you point that out thank you <laughs> so you, you your publishing house was it immediately intended to be international well the funny thing is that this colleague who I was talking about who left um, it was his idea and I was already running the book coaching business the book midwife so I was involved in helping people plan and write their books but then after that I was sending them to different publishers. So when Andy said, let's start a publishing company, I said, I haven't got any space for that. Uh -huh. Very little. Um, and I said, I really don't want to run a publishing company. I want to be independent. And I want to be able to choose the best publisher for each author. So that's very noble, um, but very stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sending a lot of money away. <laughs> you have to all, yeah, sending the money away, but also you have to stay on top of what all these companies are doing so you can give the best advice. Yeah. And in many cases, those companies did not deliver the way they should, sometimes really messing things up. In one mm. case, they were about to miss a big milestone of my client's 50th birthday, and she was um, suffering with MS, multiple sclerosis. Oh. She, the stress was not helping her and they were messing her about and missing deadlines we took that over that book so um, she was UK based but one of our early uh, customers was in Belgium and another one was in the US and so once you're good and people start talking it, the way our, the nature of business is now yeah everybody knows people in different places and so we didn't actively promote but you know when you do a good job you get word of mouth and you can't really control where the clients come from. Yeah, so, that, I like that. I, I, I like that. So it wasn't even your intention to start a publishing, publishing house, 
but you saw again somebody messing up and you knew you could do better. I so much love that about women in business. That's what we usually like to do, I do things better. Well, it's, um, it's, it's, we cared as well because yeah. we had been nurturing these yeah, people. Yeah, definitely. The hard part, which is the planning and writing, and then to have it mess up at the end, I was like, no way. Yeah. Good. So then all of a sudden you, you have a publishing, publishing house, you have international clients. How did you build it? Well, so we were very sensible in the early days because my co-founder, bless him, he, he's very cautious, very methodical. Um, so we balanced each other out. Well, you could call it balanced out. It was like eh, many times, you know, fighting, like, let's do this. And he would be like, wait, 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 let's no, wait eh, uh, 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 all the time. Um, but that was a good thing, as it turned out, because we never got into any debt, good. still haven't, never borrowed, um, we only had investment, and uh, I'm really proud of that, but, so we, we weren't very uh, bold or aggressive, or maybe I didn't think big enough, and when I took over from him, I had a lot to learn about the operations, because all I ever did was deal with the clients and the, the sales and the fun stuff. <laughs> and it was the whole company, and I was like, oh no. But, you know, when you take something on and you're a responsible person, you take it on. And yeah. You just say, whatever it takes, yep. I have to make this work. Yeah, definitely. And, and now um, I'm very proud, you know, because this book is published by you. And it's, uh, I'm one of the co-authors, uh, and it's, it's, it's only, like how, how much time is it on the market? About a six month? Weeks. It's only been out six weeks. Six weeks. It became an international uh, bestseller immediately. We were one in the US, we were one in the Netherlands, uh, my country. We were uh, okay. one in the UK, one in Germany. You know, it's like, wow. And, and how was that for you? Because you, you are the publisher of this book. It's trans Transformational Lessons. Let me just tell a little bit about it. Um, and it's, it's from a group of European thought leaders. Uh, you're one of them, I'm one of them, and there's a lot of them, 38. And we all wrote our best insights. But how was it for you to have this international bestseller? Because you did a lot. Oh, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah. So I'll just give a plug for publishing in general, mm. my company and others. We do add value because I know self-publishing is very popular. Yeah. But, you know, the clue is in the name. Mm -hmm. Self-publishing, you have to do it your self and uh there's a lot that, that can go wrong and there's just a lot to do so mm. i think it's fantastic for entrepreneurs to have an entrepreneurial publisher yeah and change the nature uh, of this yeah and change the name of our part of the industry to entrepreneurial publishing mm. because that's what we are that's what we do yeah we work almost exclusively so the good news was there were 38 entrepreneurs to work with the tricky thing was there were 38 entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> There's an expression in English. It's like herding cats. You know, like, come on, cats, you know, make a line. Yeah, they're not going to do it. You know, that cat, one's going this way, one's going that way. Whatever. Yeah. So it was kind of like that. Luckily, I have a sense of humor, as you do, Tineka. <laughs> You have to keep smiling and laughing, yeah. but you also have to just provide that leadership and guidance. And this is what I found. You know, I'm not going to generalize and say all women are like this, but I don't think many women are capable of really bulldozing and pushing people and making enemies and, you know, being aggressive. But, but you know, there's also another way of doing that. You can be aggressive in a feminine way. You can be bold in a feminine way. You don't have to make enemies, you know? And I think that's what we are so good good in, uh, because we always care about the relationship. We always care about the other party. Yeah, yeah. I think, so we call it assertive rather than aggressive. There's a big difference. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's persuading rather than pushing or selling someone on your idea. And, you know, and we have a way of doing things. We, I was trying to protect everybody from the boring and the, the horrible detail and everything like that. In terms of bestsellers, um, I think we've had about three dozen bestsellers in the past few years because it's something that people like to do. Make a focus, make a campaign, you know, do the promotion. We have one going on today, by the way. Huh. Date, but, you know, there's always a, a campaign happening around here and my team gets excited about it. Yeah, it's exciting. It's good. So if, if 
somebody has never published a book, then they're in a, you know, they've got a book and it's like, <gasps> and then it becomes a bestseller. It's like the icing on the cake. I know. And when it becomes an international bestseller, it's like the icing and the sprinkles and the cherry. And the <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, right. yeah. It, it was a very exciting day. I remember that very well. Yeah. Uh, because I've, I've written two books I've self-published. My a third, if I will write a third book, it will not be self, it will be with you, Mindy. Because after oh. that talk we had in the pub, I thought, wow, you know, there really is a lot of knowledge. But uh, there's a lot that goes on, and it's fine. Yeah. I don't mean to, to say anything bad, it's just that many self published books they, they, they make certain mistakes, they don't look quite right, they don't get into stores, and it depends on what someone cares about. Yeah, but you know, there's, there's the thing, uh, you, um, you go to foreign ex uh, exhibitions, eh? I just got back from Mexico. Yeah. So, so, you know, not every publisher does this. No. Because I take a global outlook, this is important to us, and it's important to the clients that we work with and the authors that we have. Yeah, exactly. Them. I've been to five, well, I and the team have been to five book fairs this year, London, Frankfurt, Beijing, New York, and Guadalajara. And, and what makes you decide to go to these ones? Are there only five, or are these the five biggest ones? There are others. Yeah. There's, there's many, many, many. There's Bologna, but Bologna specializes in children's books. Okay. Kind of, you know, so there's a few others where it's not relevant. Um, and then there's, there's, you know, there's one in, in uh, the UAE, uh, in, in Dubai, in Abu Dhabi that I may go to. And, the, you know, but you, you have to also uh, just watch your spend. Because a few years ago, I'll dive, digress for a minute, because I got so excited, and this is the, the um, danger of getting too excited and passionate without doing a plan for every activity. Oh, yeah. Like, this, 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 and we spent too much, and we made our first loss ever. Mm. It was exciting. We were doing lots of marketing and every show, and every, but we didn't have the sales to sustain it. Whereas mm. now, I make sure that we get the return on every investment and that we you know, learn from our mistakes, and so we got back into profit three years ago, and we will not make a loss again as long as I'm in. <laughs> and how do you how do you make sure uh, that an exhibition will be profitable? How do you do that? What's your strategy? You you really can't because it's you you never know exactly who you're going to meet, exactly which conversations you're going to have. So this time, for example, some of the uh, contacts that I thought would be really good were not good. I had the meeting, and it was obvious you know, this, this company doesn't have any money or whatever their problem is. Then another one where I thought this is just going to be a waste of time is like, oh, wow. So you have to be open. Okay. And you also, just like any exhibition, all the women listening and watching us will have been to some trade show exhibition. They will have spent money on a stand or you have to follow up. They know this, right? But this is, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so busy when you're in the moment. Then you get back and there's heaps of work and emails. And so then you you sometimes don't follow up as much True. as you do, as fast as you should. Yeah. Luckily, over 13 years, um, I've been building relationships, to use that word that you used, mm. and so I don't have to do it all myself. Many of my local partners, like my Chinese agents, work so hard for us, so hard. Yes, they get paid when we make a deal, but that relationship took time to build, mm. and now there's a lot of trust, and they've made... Well, they've, they've negotiated 20 offers of uh, Chinese editions for my authors, and it's very exciting. Wow. I couldn't be in, I've never been to China, so, but I've met these But you meet them at, at, at an, oh, wow, so that's another good reason uh, of going there. It saves you traveling, eh? Well, I'd love to go to China, but when the Beijing Fair happens, it's the end of one of my royalty periods. We're not changing our royalty period, so I don't know when I'll get to China. <laughs> not during the fair. <laughs> no. Okay. So, and and what what are your criteria, uh, Mindy, to decide to work with a, a foreign partner? Oh my goodness. Well, a lot of it is a leap of faith. Yeah. Because you don't know. Um, you you have to see how they operate. Like, are they investing in going to the shows? That's a big investment for some companies that are very small mm. or some countries where the exchange rate is not very good, where they still made the effort, they paid the flights, they take time, they're serious. I want to help the small players. And this is part of me having started with nothing and started three yeah. businesses. You give um, back. 
I would rather give the business to a small player, hmm. a woman owned business, or ideally a small woman owned business. <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't care. That's my bias because you know what? Left to chance, and you know this, left to chance, all things being equal, the male owned business will get the business because there's just more of them and they're more confident and whatever. So I think we need an extra boost and, and, and I, I make an extra effort to see if everything else is the same, I will give my business to a woman owned company. If everything else is the same, yeah. why not? Why not? And so I work with a lot of women and I enjoy that as well. Not only, oh, I don't exclude men, but you know, men get a lot of opportunities and have done for two, 200 years. I so, know, I know. I, lo oh, I so much love this topic. You know, I talk, I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you do this. I really think women should work together and do business together a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, thank yeah, you. There, there are certain initiatives that I've been part of where, you know, with hashtags and all sorts of things like proving that you're giving the business to a woman owned company. Now, the men, they shouldn't be scared because there's so much business to go around. It's just that, you know, why don't we think twice and, you know, in all the things that I do, I can't always do it. I don't have a woman owned printer of the size that they, they, I think maybe don't exist. <laughs> all the printers that we work with, and we work with 14 printers around the world, all of them are run by men. Yeah. It's a typical male industry. Yeah. 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 So, so I can't always do that. But other things, the social media company that we work with woman, um, uh, other ones, you know, I really try if I can. Good. I love yeah. that. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> We've already covered so many questions. So if, if somebody wants to become an international writer, what would be the best steps to do, to go to, okay. to do? So first of all, I'm really pleased that you use the word writer because we never use that word and I think this is just an interesting um, language uh, technicality but it's it's important to to realize that a writer is a profession and an author, author. Is somebody, like you're an author you're in a book but you're not a writer that's not what you do full-time not true okay I mean you are you are a journalist but you know so um, so putting some thought into it and saying right I want to be an author and have a book. Right, this is my latest, by the way. You asked to see it. Yeah, thank you. Oh, you did. The Thoughtful Leader. Because it's all about being thoughtful. So that's the first tip. If you want to be a, a global brand and you want being an author to be part of that, so usually it's author, speaker, trainer, consultant, some combination. Mm -hmm. So, oh, coach also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Coach, author, it's too many things. Um, but, you know, it's most of us are doing more than one thing. But you know, Lindy, uh, sorry to interrupt you, I know this is the typical niche that uh, authors come from, but I believe it could be good for any business if you have a book. I agree. I agree. Usually the people who are entrepreneurs, so let's just say these female entrepreneurs that I want to do business with, I don't know, I can't find them, I don't know who they are, but if they wrote a book, a great book, a thought leading book, and became a thought leader, became known. I would hear about them, read about them. Yeah. And then when I have that piece of business, I would think of them. So this is the thing that you can do. You, you, it's like a circle. It's a, going the wrong way, virtuous circle. Uh, first, you know, you write and people say content, but I, I think a book trumps content every time. Mm. And content like on the web, there's millions and millions and millions of web pages, blogs. The minute you write a book, it's like, but you hear, mm -hmm. you almost leapfrog or catapult yourself to a higher level. And, it, and not so many people write books so far. And so that's the one thing that you think about is like, you've got to get that book out there, but it has to be good. And that's why I'm so um, passionate about thoughtful leadership because thought leadership is not an accident. And nobody should call herself a thought leader. I would never say I'm a thought leader. Uh, and um, I liked the way you put it before because you didn't have to say you are one, I am one. We're in a community of thought leaders, but really it's the market who calls you one. So working in that context of uh, putting something out there, but without being able to guarantee the outcome. 
is uh, it's a bit nerve-wracking for women mm -hmm. you know the women want to be sure and 200 percent sure before they do something oh i know you can't be and no so we have to adopt that masculine trait yep definitely fake it till you make it or just just you know pushing yourself even when you're not confident inside and but then once you have that brand building other people jump on and it's what i said before you don't have to do it yourself because you start getting word of mouth when you do good work yeah and we all have experienced this when you do it globally it's a special thing it's like not invented here i don't know if, if you've heard that when it's not invented here it's exotic so yes yes I, when i go to the states with my crazy accent because i was born there but i you know been away 28 years they think i'm exotic huh. <laughs> really <laughs> but, but i know it's it's been the same for me i live in the netherlands in the netherlands oh yeah many people uh, know me but i i'm not being asked a lot now being abroad uh, yeah i'm i'm the one who travels that's apparently very, very interesting I, I love it so i mean i would do it anyway and you know what the beautiful thing is now in the netherlands they ask me <laughs> because i'm international it makes it well yeah it, it apparently it does that's the way it goes yeah i love that you say the exotic ah i'm exotic huh? <laughs> but yeah <laughs> hey Min mindy um you know, we, we can talk for hours uh, like this, and I really, I, I really love your way, uh, what, what, what you say about women. I totally agree, we need to be more masculine. Uh, yeah, just like two days ago, or last night it was, a friend of mine, she's in business, and she phoned me, she said, Tineke, this report, I need to finish it today. I said, it's already finished. You know, a man wouldn't think about it, doing, uh, taking it for two months um, and, and on and on, uh, send it. And she said, yeah, but you know, I need to wrap it up a bit. I said, no, you don't. You need to send it in now because it will be more to their expectation already. And we just sometimes need that reassurance. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I don't know if, the, yeah, I suppose we have to not be more masculine, but borrow some of those traits. Yeah, yeah, yeah that get the men the success, the extra success that they have got in the, in the past. Yeah. Um, I think nowadays business is being done slightly differently. And yeah. Nobody really likes that aggressive approach. True. And finding a lot of enlightened men who are willing to work in a not more feminine way, but just a, a just a calmer, you know, maybe more feeling way of mm. being more feminine. <laughs> And so we borrow from each other. Yeah. Maybe we meet somewhere in the middle. I don't really think about these things a lot. Just by talking about it now, we're having this discussion because of the context. I just get on with my life. And when I see something is not working, and trust me, I've had plenty of instances of that, including creating the first loss in our business, which I did single-handedly <laughs> six and a half years ago. I did that. And then, but then it was taking ownership of that and saying, you know what, I caused that. And then it took us four years to get out of that loss. I mean, mm, painful. Eh? <laughs> a lot of women would be like, oh, I'm no good. And I'm, but I had a job to do. Yeah. And I had 150 authors at that time who relied on me. And I had, you know, built this and my household relies on my salary. And I thought, I don't care. I have to keep going. And yeah. So that was like a masculine trait. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. we can have all. Men can be feminine, we can be masculine. I believe the same what you say. We have to have both and meet, meet in the middle. And I love that the way business is being done is changing. And I believe it is because we are now starting more and more businesses. Because, you know, it's, it, yeah, men, men have done it for centuries and their way worked until we came and, and we, wa we want something else. And I think it's good. Yeah, and, and I have, as I say, I'm attracting uh, as clients a lot of enlightened men who are more interested Interesting. in yeah. inside. And it really is something special because they're adding books to the market that are um, saying something new in a different way. It's allowing men. I mean, I have a man who wrote a book called Feel It as a Man about men and their feelings. Absolutely brilliant because people don't talk about this old man. But meanwhile, he suffered, he was divorced twice because I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, 
he says he made all these mistakes and he was not, uh, you know, in touch with his feelings and he wouldn't talk to his wife and communicate about his feelings. And it happened twice. And he went, okay, I learned the lesson. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so this is great. I, I'm so supportive of that. Women taking on a bit more bold approach, but men taking a more sensitive approach. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you. I love it. So if people want to get in touch with you, um, what would be the best way? Well, because my uh, family name is so long and has a hyphen and is complicated, uh, I, I created a brand, which is just one word, like Madonna or Beyonce, but mine is Mindy GK. Okay. <laughs> so it's Mindy and then GK. From oh, okay. Facebook. Yeah. And that is my Twitter handle and that is my main website and that everything, it's like a portal, a portal into another universe. <laughs> It's put wow. into my businesses and also book midwife, one word. Book midwife. And, and Panoma Press, eh? your publishing yes. house. Yeah, so everything feeds everything else. You can find me. I mean, Panoma, do we have time to talk about the name or no? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. See, it was going to be Anoma without the P. Yeah. Which means spiritual wisdom. It's, it's a very ancient word in the Pali language, which is a, you know, from the Buddhist text. Okay, you know? yeah. But Anoma was kind of hard to say and it conflicted with another company. And so we added the P to make it more expansive and, you know, far reaching, like Pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it? Yeah, it's a made up word. And ever since we changed the company name six, seven years ago, everything's gone. Wow, oh, so, so much for a name. What, just one letter and everything just changes. Letter, it's a big difference. Wow. Yeah. And, um, so that's, it doesn't mean anything, although it does. It means global wisdom now. So you'll like that. <sighs> Definitely. That's why I'm interviewing you, because you are spreading <laughs> global wisdom. You're a global so. businesswoman. Is there anything you would like to add to, to the conversation? Yes. Okay. I would encourage any woman listening to me or watching to, to be aware of the thought that comes up, oh, it's all right for you, oh, you're special, or you're, because seriously, when I started 17 years ago, I didn't even want to run a business. I had had three layoffs, redundancies, left the companies with a bit of money each time, and I had my little kids and I said, okay, no more, I'm not going to go to a job. So I was an accidental entrepreneur and I didn't want to do it and I don't think I was very good at it for a few years. But I mean, now I have a certain amount of success and I think if you just stick at it and if you say, okay, I'm not perfect, but I'm getting better and I'm learning and, you know, really make sure you do learn from mistakes and opportunities, you can have whatever you want. And it sounds so trite, it sounds so stupid, but it's, I'm not special. I'm really not. Um, I'm a little bit more determined than many people, like yeah. yourself. You know? Yeah. Maybe a lot of the women, you know, watching are kind of special. But any one of us, and ideally all of us, should really go for it. Yeah. Because there's so much opportunity out there. And so, you know, I just wish all the women all the best. And I will be there trying to give all the women more business and more profile and you know sharing and tweeting and, and yeah you know, let's oh. all celebrate each other's success that's yeah right. oh thank you that's that's really nice thank you so much uh mindy so wow you know we've already come to the end of this interview um everybody who's watching i hope you really liked it mindy gave some golden nuggets you know it's it's about determination it's about actually not having a plan eh? that's what i heard you know and then things happening but you move and you see the possibilities and you go yeah and and uh, doing business with women is is one of the other things which is really important to you and uh, yeah i love i love your tips thank you so much well thank you for having me on the show well it was a pleasure so bye bye everybody bye bye mindy <laughs> And see you next time.